today we will be making a probe that will be going to the moon and we're starting right now. So we start our day off with a mission control where our good old friend Terry Kerman is giving us a mission. Establish an orbit around the moon with an apoapsis less than 2400 kilometers and a periapsis greater than 60, which means elliptical orbit around the moon. Perfect, let's track the mission and I think Alongside we can do this, going green, we can take the GSMC Science Junior to the vessel and perform an environmental survey of the Kerbin. To do that we're going to be taking some tech nodes and previous mission gave us a 133 amount of science, so we're going to be starting with the small payloads, yes, because that gives us the fairings. Then we're going to go with lights and utilities, which we don't need right now, now that much, but we need the lock node that it unlocks, which is the power management. That gives us the batteries and the solar panels. Thank you. Then we're going to go with the basic trusses, which will round up our first initial build. So let's go for the building. And for your benefit, I'm going to show this three and a half time accelerated. We're going to be selecting Kerbin to the moon, uh, or Mun, sorry. Yes, it's pronounced MUN, and I'm creating this small MUN probe. So it's total of one probe core and four batteries, and I'm going to be placing six solar panels around it to pro provide enough you know, fuel, or five. Anyway, then we're going to be placing the Science Junior. We're going to be placing the radially attached, you know, um, parachute. Yes, that's what this is, thing is called. We're going to be attaching another component which will be the communications device so yes this antenna yeah looks good and you might be wondering Grunkworks why are you putting you know the parachutes because I intend to return this one why you may ask because uh, the science junior is making the science samples and when it's making science samples samples you cannot transmit back so you want to return the samples back to the KSC and recover the vessel so yeah, I'm doing sort of a two mission in one, but uh, yeah, it, it's not required by the mission, but all in all, let's do this. So, right, so let's put on the fairing. We're going to be placing the fairing, extending the fairing. There we go. Oh, well, come on. Modify the fairing. Yes, close it down. Okay, that looks good to me and one more component and close it up. Okay, that looks good. I'm happy with this fairing. Now let's strap on some fuel tanks and then we're going to be putting a swivel because that one will be our transfer stage, transfer slash circularization stage because those two should be, I mean, yes, I, I guess enough. Okay, beautiful. Now let's place another decoupler and then we're we'll going to be placing this setup. So this setup in the atmosphere gives us a 0 0.95 thrust to weight, which is not enough to accelerate. However, we solve our problem as we always do in the KSP, more boosters. So, and I plan to add two more. We'll see if we need more. And those give us 1.72, but in vacuum, hold on, in atmosphere, it's 1.43. I'm going to go with four. Yes. And I'm going to reduce a little bit... Um, I'm gonna let's just strut them up and I think that will be our rocket you know easy peasy we're not gonna go much more complex than that just some grid fins to make sure that the rocket is stable on ascent but other than that some thrust limiter to fine-tune that initial thrust when taking off and honestly guys I mean this red and gray paint uh, it's a little bit too much red if you ask me I think I'm gonna go and change the coloring a little bit on it I'm going to change my agency colors. I, while I do love gray with the red accent, I think I accidentally put the red with the gray accent. So, yeah, I imagine that. I'm going to go with the clamshell times three deploy. And let's put the launch clamps, put it down. And that is our rocket, actually. Right. So, I just want to be sure and check my staging, making sure that everything is in the correct stage. And after that, we're going to be placing the, hold on, uh, where do I, okay, fairing disabled, I want to uh, fix my parachutes, I don't think one parachute should be enough, okay, these might be sticking out, so they might get overheated and blow up, I'm going to place two chutes here, I'm going to place two panels here, and then I'm copy going to copy panels all around, that looks much better to me. 
Then I'm gonna take the drogue shoot and I'm gonna place one, it's enough, and I'm gonna place it here. Good. Return back the fairing and let's recolor this. So enough with the red, let's go with the blue. Okay, we're gonna go all, all Swedish on this one. We're gonna take it blue and yellow and you know, blow ghoul. So yeah, looks cool, I'm liking it. I'm gonna try and associate a country to every launch. Maybe that would be fun. So this one is the Swedish one. Look how beautiful sunshine goes and let's kick off the countdown. I always love this part. This is amazing. Deluge on, igniters, and boosters! By the way guys, you might have noticed that I did put boosters and clamps on a separate stages, and I did so to avoid the pitfall of, you know, pressing the stage and the booster falls down. I've learned the hard way. <clears throat> you might be seeing the, all of uh, the bulk of this episode slightly accelerated because I think you know, going at one time speed doesn't leave a lot of fun and uh, it makes the episodes too long. So I figured I'd do it at a little bit accelerated pace, but you get to enjoy the full soundtrack because, well, yeah. Um, uh, it's a trick. I managed to <laughs> put full on soundtracks, but with even with accelerated YouTube video without accelerating the soundtrack. Yeah, hope you like it, guys. Do let me know. Anyway, speaking of that, we have a blinking science, you know, perform me. So yeah, I did transmit the science. And after we get into the orbit, we will be doing another science, which should hopefully check off our requirement for, a, you know, an optional mission goal. All right. So coming into the Kerbin, we're going to be accelerating until we see periapsis, apoapsis. This needs a little bit tweaking always. On ascent, we want 100 by 100, which after some fiddling, whoopsie. All right, I think that's good enough. I'm not gonna feel too much about it. I'm happy with that as is. Now, let's get rid of the fairings, shall we? Okay, I'm still not getting why is the fairing going forwards. This needs to be fixed. Devs, please. All right. Speaking of which, uh, we are starting our burn. Whoa! Yeah, this is the reason why the fairings need to go to the sides, guys, rather than forward. Okay, pushing another stage, and then we're gonna go for the circularization. As I said, I did accelerate this because you know the drill, how it works. Okay, I think we've accelerated, and it's 108 by 100, going green. So, yes, we managed to transmit the data from the um, from the science junior and now we're going to be fixing our inclination technically for the month if you launch co launch correctly you don't need to fix your inclination but i tend to mess up by a slight margin i was way better in ksp1 doing that so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna go and fix it slightly and then we're, let's go to create the maneuver node going to mun Okay, now I fiddle to find the optimal transfer, highlight the periapsis, and then I'm going to do a little bit of fiddling until I get a moon periapsis around 60-ish. And there's a reason why I'm doing 60-ish. I know that the mission says be between 200, 2000, below 5000, 2400 and above 60 kilometers. I'm trying to be the, to, close to 60 because I want to gather also the low above man uh, data. And I'm gonna do that after we successfully complete the mission, and then I'm gonna be returning the probe back to Kerbin. Okay, some finalization needed, a little bit. I typically like to remove here, so we are at 67, that's good enough. Let's stage and accelerate. I really like these transitions, they're so beautiful and uh, they look amazing. What can I tell you? All right, transmit all. So I'm using my antenna to transmit all of the transmittable science. Samples we're not gonna transmit, obviously, because we cannot, we need to return them. So that's good. And after all of the science has been transmitted, then we're gonna do a transition to the moon's sphere of influence. You know, hit on the afterburners and let's go. Right, ready? Let's go. Oh, Kerman looks so beautiful. KSP2 graphics, man. 
And as you can see, so far everything is running smoothly, even though I'm running it at slight acceleration, it really looks nice. Part ineffective, like of the stellar exposure, and let's get into the moon's sphere of influence, and da ding There we go. Hitting on the Science Junior immediately, and we're gonna be transferring some of the experiments what we can, because you know, I'm always a little bit cautious when it comes to sending data. I want to send back as much as possible because I'm always worried, what if my part crashes? What if my ship goes bananas? There is a reason why it's smart to do that early on, at least with the transmittables one. You don't lose anything by transmitting them. All right, so apoapsis, 1,700, that's good enough. And look at this beautiful transition as the picture of the jour says it. Okay, let's orient ourselves to be ready for the burn, which will be in roughly eight and a half minutes. Another screenshot opportunity. Cheek. Yes, that's, uh, you know, my Steam telling me I have just recorded the screenshot, which is beautiful. One of those will be used for the episode, for sure. Now we are at one minute away from the burn. By the way, guys, if you do like the video, do me a solid and hit that thumbs up, you know, like the episode. And if you'd like to catch up and see more of these KSP2 videos when they come out, I'll be posting a lot more, then you might want to consider subscribing. All right, I have loads and loads of KSP videos, and I think now for the KSP1, I'm around 800 videos total. So yeah, you can imagine how many videos I'm gonna make for the KSP2. All right, now that being said, we are gonna be lowering our periapsis. Now, we have successfully completed all of the mission's objectives. There's no doubt about it. However, I'd, little, I'd like to do a little bit extra science. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna burn now. So my periapsis around, is around 18 kilometers. And hopefully that should be enough to bring us into the moon low above moon sphere of influence and biome which will help us a lot get another science sample collection. While we are here, I mean, it would be silly that we don't do it. So we're gonna be positioning our craft. I'm just trying to get a very nice, you know, screeny because this looks cool. Right, Man, you know, Kerbin in the background. They really, it's, it's a nice alignment. What can I tell you? I'm a sucker for good uh, screenshots. Aren't you? Right, so. That being said, we are gonna go now, sometime now, we should get the science popping in. Ah, there it is. And low above man. So we have collected it and we are transmitting it. Of course, there are still samples, which they're gonna be need to be returned back to Kerbin. So that being said, let's quickly create a maneuver node. And that one we're gonna be used to get out of Kerbin's sphere of influence and return back safely to Kerbin. And by safely, I'm doing the air quotes because, you know, Kerbal, safe in Kerbal, uh, that's a different story. So, right. Lowering the periapsis above Kerbin and, oh, 49. I want to go around 35-ish. I know it's gonna get things heated, but then again, who cares? Okay, burn in two, one, and go. Okay, careful. Now let's see the periapsis, it's 82. So I want to just do a gentle correction so that we are at 35. Okay, leaving the man, bye bye man, and thanks for the science. Coming back to Kerbin, we should be really careful not to hit the, the gas too much because after all, this might burn up in the atmosphere. So the moment we get very close to the atmosphere, I'm thinking around 100-ish. Okay, 88, that works too. Let's retract the antenna because now we should have enough range even without the antenna extended. And I'm gonna be hitting the brakes or actually using all of my Delta V to decelerate because that will make my atmospheric heating consequences a lot less. I, I will also arm the drogue chute because it should deploy when it's safe, although technically it's feeling safe now. Why? I have no idea. And let's accelerate and look at that plasma heating. Here we go, heating effects. That's just beautiful. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, and my shoot activated. I mean, in theory, that one should be fried. Uh-oh, I think we lost an engine there. Uh, you might, now at this point, you guys might be asking, but Chromeforks, you did create a shield. Yes, I did. 
However, when I was doing my testing run, the shield, when I landed, hand landed a little bit harsh and it crashed into the Science Junior and I lost all of my science data when I was doing the initial playthrough just to test out KSP2 a little bit. So this time I figured, you know, the fuel tank would be a nice insulation. It would also perform the role that it did on Starship suborbital flights. It comes down, it crushes, it compresses, but the science experiments will be stored, hopefully. So gently landing, and we did the la land at a gentle 8 meters per second, so that's okay. Recover the experiments, and let's see how do we, how did we do. Moon or bust? I'm actually gonna go with the secondary, going green, submit. Doc, nice, good news and some less good news. Thumbs up, beautiful. And what about the moon or bust? Are we gonna get some extra points for that? We sure will. And that has collected us a grand total of 568 experiments, so which we're gonna use in the next episode. Thanks for watching.